In this video, we'll look at the molecular geometry for CH3OCH3. This is dimethyl ether. So we're going to look at this from the perspective of the central oxygen atom right here. There's two ways we can find the molecular geometry for this dimethyl ether. First is we can look at the things bonded to this central oxygen and then use this table here. So we can see that we have this carbon here bonded, and then we have another carbon bonded there, plus we have these two lone pairs. So we have four things total, and two of those are lone pair. That means we'll have a bent molecular geometry, and the bond angles be about 109.5. Let's see if we can visualize what that looks like. So we'll consider the purple. That'll be the central atom. That'll be the oxygen. And then we're going to add the two methyl groups. So we add one, two methyl groups. You see they spread out. Here it's just represented by a sphere, but you can imagine that CH3, and then we have a CH3 over here. They spread out. They give us this linear molecular geometry. But we have two lone pairs, so we need to add those. We add one, and it pushes everything down into this bent molecular geometry. When we add the other lone pair, it even pushes it down further, still called a bent molecular geometry. And the bond angle for the bent molecular geometry is about 109.5. In this case, because those methyl groups, so CH3, are large, they'll actually kind of push away from each other a little bit, and the bond angle will be around 110 degrees. Back to our Lewis structure, we could also use the AXE notation to figure out the molecular geometry for CH3OCH3. So we have A, that's the central atom. X, that would be the number of things bonded, the number of atoms bonded. We have a carbon and a carbon, so two carbons. And E, that would be the number of lone pairs. We have one, two lone pairs on that central oxygen. So we have what's called an AX2E2. And if you've memorized this or you look it up, this is a bent molecular geometry. If you're asked to figure out the molecular geometry for this carbon or this one, they're the same. It has one, two, three, four things bonded to it, no lone pairs. So this carbon here and this one here, tetrahedral molecular geometry. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.